Hello everyone and welcome to this video on volumetric lights in Unity. Today we are going to be taking this scene and turning it into this. And before we get started, if you guys haven't watched my latest video, I just launched a new website. It's called Dev Assets. It's a place you can go to download high quality asset packs. It's pay what you want and I think it's pretty awesome. So go to devassets.com if you want to check it out and let's just jump right into today's video. So here's the scene we're going to be working with today. Some of you might recognize it because it's the same one I used in the Dev Assets video to showcase some of these cool looking sci-fi vehicles. We're of course going to be adding some volumetric lights to the scene, but I also want to show you kind of how I put this whole thing together because a lot of you guys were curious in the comments and so I thought I would give you a quick rundown of what we have in here. But first, let's talk about what volumetric lights really are. So here's an example of volumetric lights working inside an engine. This photo is from Killzone, which runs on the Decima engine. And um, it's a really good example because not only do we see the effects of the light on a surface and a bit of bloom, we also see very clearly these rays coming from the light and how these are affected by a bit of noise, giving the impression that we have some dust and particles flo floating in the air that the light is hitting and then reflecting off of, and therefore we are able to see the light um, scattering through the air. So that's what we're going to be making inside of Unity. However, Unity doesn't have this feature built in. So we have to look to third party alternatives. And I searched around a bit and I found something that I thought was really, really cool. So here's Volumetric Lights for Unity. It's an open source project created by a guy called Michael and it uses the same technique that Killzone does for calculating these lighting effects. It currently supports both point lights, spotlights and directional lights. So it really has all the features that you're going to need in most pretty much all your projects. And the cool thing about it is again, it's open source and freely available. So you can see here, there will be a link to the GitHub page in the description where you can of course clone or download the project, but it's set up as a Unity project. So I thought I would go ahead and compile a Unity package and I've done this. So if you just go in the description, there will be a link for that as well. When you open that up, you get a folder called volumetric lights, which inside it has a volumetric lights Unity package. And this allows us to just double click this it's going to prepare the package and you can see I already have some of the stuff in the project but not the volumetric lights folder. We can just hit import and it's going to set everything up for you. So that's really easy. And the warnings down here are not generated by the volumetric lights um, uh, package. They are generated by some other stuff I have in the project already because yeah, it's a bit messy in here. But just ignore those. You should not get any uh, warnings when doing it. So now we have a volumetric lights folder in our project and if we open that up there are a bunch of example scenes that I definitely recommend you check out if you want to know how you can set some of this up for your own project. More specifically you should check out some of the sun labeled ones because they show how to set up directional lights to work with fog and hazes and stuff like that. Alright, so let's get started by having a look at what's currently in our scene. Of course we have this main light, which is our sun, a directional light with a fairly high intensity, which has a kind of reddish tint. And you can see just how important this light is if I disable it and re-enable it. We also have an accent light, a blue light shining from the opposite direction. You can see it hitting the car right here. It has a much lower intensity and is tinted in a blue color to really help bring some depth into the scene. You can see if I disable this now that everything looks very bland and green. So that's a really important thing to have. I've also turned up the ambient uh, intensity of our ambient light quite a bit so that our skybox will illuminate the scene from all angles. You can see I've turned it up to 1.66. The reason why is I looked at some reference photos from Mars and saw that the light was getting bounced around a lot. We had these really bright illuminated scenes. So I thought I would replicate that by just bumping up the ambient light. Awesome. So other than that, in here we of course have a terrain. That's just a Unity terrain, which I can enable and disable. We have a few rocks that I've just scattered around. Any rock pack will do. And we also have a dust storm. And this is actually just taking from the standard assets. I simply tweaked it by changing the size around a bit to make it look a bit better. But that's really it. And that gives this scene. One thing that does make this scene look a lot better is all of the image effects that I have applied. And if we go have a look at my main camera here, you can see just what those are. So first of all, we have a global fog, which just helps blur out the background a bit and adds in this uh, bright color here. 
I also have a depth of field with which is of course blurring the background and the foreground and leaving only the middle part here, this the uh, vehicle in the center in focus. We also have the color correction curves here and I do a lot of heavy color correction on this image. You can see if I disable that, just how much of a difference that makes. I really bring out the reds and yellows and try and suppress some of the greens. And you can see I have some blue in there, but it's not overwhelming. So that really helps a lot with um, bringing this Mars-like feel into the scene and not just having it look like uh, a desert environment or uh, yeah, you definitely don't want a lot of green on Mars. Then we also have a bloom, which just helps blur out some of the highlights in the scene. And we have some vignette and chromatic operation, but that's very, very uh, subtle. You can see if I disable that, it's just a very, very subtle vignette we have going on here. And a bit of chromatic aberration as well, just at 0.5. Finally, the most important part of the scene is of course the sci-fi vehicles themselves. You can see them here. We have our main vehicle here in front and then we have two supporting vehicles back here. And they are part of the sci-fi vehicles pack. If you want to get them for yourself, you can just go and open your browser, type in devassets.com. There will also be a link for that in the description. Go to sci-fi vehicles, choose a price that works for you. If you are totally unable to pay, we even have a free option because we understand what that's like. And then you just hit pay what you want. It's going to download as a zip file with a Unity package and everything is going to be set up for you. So you can just drag in the vehicles and you're good to go. So that's pretty much all for our scene. Let's start looking at some lights. To get started, let's go ahead and find our vehicle in front here or whatever you want to apply lights to. And let's right click and go light and then select spotlight. Because I want a light shining in a particular direction with a, an angle and a range, which really works for these kind of lights. So let's just move this up a bit and position it on the top light here and we'll do that one first. We'll do the two other ones as well, but I thought we would make this one the um, brightest one. And so we'll do that one first. Let's also rotate this one on the X axis and make sure you're in local when doing some rotation. It just makes it easier. And uh, I'll just rotate it about 90 degrees. Doesn't have to be totally um, uh, precise. And let's go ahead and bump up the range here to something like 20 and that just means that it will shine further and brighter. And we'll also bump up the spot angle. I think the angle that Unity uses by default is very very narrow and you won't see this on a lot of lights. What you see instead is a fairly broad spot angle where the light source actually hits pretty close. I don't think this is totally unrealistic. I want to see it hit the car and hit the ground a little bit as well. And if we disable it, you can see that's exactly what is happening. So that's awesome. And let's go ahead and change the color of the light to a light blue, just to give some contrast to our overall feel of the scene. And for some reason, our lighting just didn't uh, bake correctly there, but you can just enable and disable the light if that happens to you. I also want to bump up the intensity because we have so many intense lights in our scene, we have to compete with this one. So we'll just bump that up to three, but that's going to depend totally on your scene. I'm also going to put some hard shadows in here. You can see what that does. I wouldn't recommend using soft shadows for a lot of point lights. That will quickly make your scene very, very hard to run. Uh, but having some hard shadows on this light is not going to do anything. At least not when we have this few things in our scene. So now we've added our light and we are ready to make it volumetric. In order to do this, we go hit add component. We search for volumetric light and add this volumetric light script. And you can see nothing is happening inside of our game or scene view. That's because of two reasons. Primarily because this is not going to show unless we hit play. And if I hit play, it's still not going to show. And the reason why is that we have to go and select our main camera, hit add component and add the volumetric light renderer. And this is what actually shows our light. So now we need to go to the default spot cookie and we just need to input the spot, which is part of the volumetric lights pack. So let's just double click that. And now things should actually be working. It might not be too clear, but when we hit play, we do actually have a bit of volumetricness to this light, but it's not really showing. To make it more clear, what we'll do is go and bump up the scattering coefficient. And you can see once I do this, it becomes very clear 
that our light is now shining. We get these nice rays and this nice blooming effect. It just looks a whole lot better. But one thing that doesn't look too good about our light is how static it feels. If we go out and disable our dust storm, you can see that our light is indeed showing, but it isn't really affected by any kind of dust or disturbance in the air or anything like that. To make it feel more random and lifelike, we'll go and select the spotlight and we'll enable the noise. And this is basically a way to add some randomness to our light. But right off the bat, you can see it just almost disables it. That's because we have to bump up the noise intensity. I think we can go for something like 4.5. Yeah, that looks a lot better. But our noise is still not too visible. And that's because our noise scale is too small. If we go ahead and drag on our noise scale here and increase it, we can actually see that the noise grains themselves become a lot smaller. So you want definitely you definitely want a large noise scale, but you don't want it too big because then it cannot be seen and you don't want it too small because then it's going to look like you've just overlaid a noise map and you're just scrolling through it and that looks super weird. So I think something like 0.12, so 0.12 looks pretty good for our case. The final thing that we need to edit a bit is the noise velocity. And that is just the speed at which our noise will scroll through. So if I edit this to say 20 on the X, you can see just what that does. I think we want the X to be around one. So just a bit of movement there. And then our Y should be about negative three because our dust is moving towards our from the right side of our screen to the left side. So I think that's going to look a lot uh, better if it's in line with our dust storm. So now make sure that you copy the settings on this um, component. So hit copy component and then we exit out of play mode. Make sure you do this before you exit play mode or your settings are going to be lost. So now we exit play mode, we right click and we hit paste component values to save all of our um, configurations back in. So now what we can do is maybe take this light here and we can rename it to our top light. Then we can duplicate it and we can add one to these down here as well. So in our scene view, we'll just go ahead and move this one down, move it over a bit and move it forward. And we'll just have to position it until we are happy with it. Something like that actually looks pretty good. And we'll also probably want to tilt it downwards a bit because this lamp is pointing a bit down towards the ground. Something like that looks good. And I definitely also want to edit the color. So let's just go and take the color here and make it a bit more yellow orange ish, something like this. And I don't want it to be too saturated. So if we go in here and hit play now, we should see that this is currently really, really blown out. I definitely want to bump the intensity down to say one, maybe 1.5 at max. And I want to have the range decrease to something like 15. And we can maybe even decrease the spot angle, but I actually think we should leave it as is. And finally, when we hit play, we might also want to mess around with the coefficient a bit just to make it a tiny bit more clear to see. Or we could, of course, bump up the noise intensity. But I think what we really want is maybe, uh, yeah, to just bump up the scattering coefficient a tiny bit, something like that, just make it a bit clearer. We'll copy the component again, we'll exit out of play mode and we'll paste it back in. And now we can just take this light, rename it to something like front uh, light and then we'll do underscore right, duplicate it, move it over and it should fit right uh, away and we'll do front light left. Cool, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. So now when we hit play, we should see all of the lights working nicely and it just adds a lot of depth to our scene. It really makes everything pop and makes it feel more lifelike. You can see what a difference this makes if I go ahead and disable the lights. It feels very static now and very 3D-ish. And if I go in here and just move our camera a bit, I've created this camera pivot where we can just rotate over our camera. You can see how cool this looks when viewed from front as well and from the other side here. So it just looks really, really nice from all angles. And what we can even do is maybe tilt our camera down so we look from underneath here 
and you can see just how cool of a dramatic effect this gives us. I'm just going to show you something really cool about these vehicles and that's the fact that they are totally modular. So if we have a look here, this cabin here will rotate separately of the body. We have all the wheels which will rotate separately as well so you can easily set it up with a vehicle controller inside of Unity. And we also have the turrets here which will also aim independently. And uh, finally, some of these vehicles also have this top part here where you can put something like a turret or you can swap it out and simply use the radar that we have on the other vehicle here. So you can really customize these to look the way you want them to and of course they are optimized for a PBR workflow so we have both an albedo, a specular, normal map, height map, occlusion map and emission. So all of the maps that you could desire are in here. So again, if you like it and you want to support it, go to the DevAvs Asset website, grab it and uh, hopefully pay a bit if you're able to. And if not, that's totally fine as well. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you liked it. Remember there's a new video out every Sunday and Wednesday. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in November and a special thanks to Sultan Al Sharif, Faisal Marifai, James Calhoun and Robert Bonham. Become a patron yourself at patreon.com slash brackies.